Hello, this is the DIY Magician, and we're on the journey to figure out how to be funny. And I'm here with... Glenn Strange. Thank you, Glenn, for coming today. And um, before I, well, I'll, I'll talk about Glenn later on. I don't want to embarrass him now. Uh, Glenn, I, I'm uh, on a journey to find out how to be funny. And I have five questions to ask you. And the first question is, who is your comedy inspiration? Uh, gosh, I, don't, I have a lot of them. You know, I, it's not one particular person. I, I like a lot of good comedians. Some comedians I don't care for. I like... I like people that make you think, like Mitch Hedburn, I used, when he was around, his stuff was great. And, and Steve Harvey, I love his style of humor. It's something that I could never achieve, but I love watching him. And of course, Steve Martin and, and Robin Williams, all those are, are great. Just above average, above, above great, you know. And that's the ones I enjoy watching. And, and not to steal their timing or anything like that, because you can't duplicate it. But it, they, they've got gifts, and, and, and that's, I'm sorry. That, that's just what I enjoy, you know. And, and uh, it's interesting, you, you use those uh, comedians, they're all in that same kind of uh, subtle humor. Uh, I, I mean, Robin would, would get a little excitable, but uh, but yeah, that's that sounds about right on that. Um, so a very good selection. I like that. Uh, now uh, we're going to go on in the and as as we go, the questions get harder. <laughs> so no, um, let me ask you: uh, What is funny to you? What what what's what makes you laugh? Uh, I guess kind of like I say, like humor that makes you think. It's not right in your face. Like the Three Stooges when I was a kid, and all other kids loved Three Stooges, but I didn't find it humorous. And, and I don't, and it bothered me. I said, that's not funny. That's just beating each other. I felt sorry for the person that's getting hit or something. But I like humor that makes you think that doesn't give you the punchline indirect, directly, but it gives it to you indirectly, so you have to think about it. And, and those types of humor that the more you think about it, the funnier it gets. And when you think about all the, all the little tidbits that have to line up to get to the punchline, and, and that's what I call smart humor, and uh, that's what I enjoy. And it's not what I do because I'm not real smart, but that's what I enjoy. <laughs> now, um, let me ask you because I want to I want to uh, dig a little deeper on this if you if you don't mind. Um, now, um, you you uh, you like. Um, uh, the, the the subtle humor and this and that and I and I, I had a had a way I was going to go with this and I and I, I don't know if I'm going there but the uh, question is um, well when you were watching uh, the Three Stooges um, was there an alternative uh, at the same time period I, I know you're not old enough to see them originally but when they when they would show up but yeah, yeah. <laughs> they used to come by the house oh yeah <laughs> so um, was there a, a contemporary of the Stooges that you did like I I it's a kind of a side question. I loved the old comedy teams like Jerry Lewis and, and uh, Lauren Hardy and, and all those, they were in black and white and reruns that I saw them thousands of times. I enjoyed that humor and I can't tell you why. And, and that's the ones I would watch as a little kid. I'd rather watch that in cartoons. All other kids were watching cartoons and cartoons just because it wasn't real. I did now cartoons when I grew up were not like cartoons now. Car I love cartoons now, oh, yeah. but when I grew up, they were like stick figures with a head on them, and uh, and they sang opera. You know, when Mickey Mouse sang opera. So, but uh, I just enjoyed the the real life human being, where they took a, a normal everyday act and turned it into humor. So, and thank you, because I I I. I, I, I uh, I respect your humor, and I and I I'm, I may be going. I'm sorry if I'm going to tell you this. I'm I'm going to dig a little deeper, but not not too far off the. No, no, not too far off the track. No, no. It's just that's why, I um um because this is what I was going to say early on. Your humor fascinates me, and I and I and I'll, I'll talk about it at the end. It's not going to embarrass you. Uh, it, it's just um um I, I think you're very funny. So that's why I, I I'm I'm. I'm uh, taking little little side journeys here. No, uh, yeah, <laughs> go abuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let me get to the next question. The next one is is um, is kind of that 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 uh, the the hill we're going to cross, and then it's going to get a little harder, but not too bad. Um, the next question is is I'm 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 looking forward to this one because I want to know what your uh, funniest moment was that was unscripted. In fact, it just happened out of the blue as a performer. Something that happened to you. Um, what was your favorite unscripted moment? I wish I had a better memory because I know there's been a lot of them, and, and I just don't remember them. But maybe if I thought about it long enough, I would. 
my type show is not so much me being funny, it's the people I have on stage and directing them in an avenue so that they become the funny part. And it, in our entertainment, it, as long as you get a laugh from the audience, the audience, when we leave, thinks that I was the one that was funny, but really I wasn't the one that was funny, it was the person I had on stage It was funny. And sometimes their comebacks and things are, are the part that's that steal the show and I can remember one time doing I did a, a, a Spongebob effects it's been around for years and they don't even make anymore it's called clones it's kind of like multiplying rabbits and when it gets to the end they open their hands up and all these sponge balls fall out on the floor well it was a family audience and all the kids were down front at the edge of the stage and when those sponge balls hit the floor a whole sea it looked like high tide at Myrtle <laughs> Beach all these kids just came across the stage stole all and it must have been a little 50 little bitty sponge ball they all left with one and they all went back together and 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 so I didn't know what to do <laughs> so I just stood there and and did one of those Jackie Gleason or, or, or uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, um, the one that paused forever, oh, Jack, Benny. Jack, Jack Benny. Jack. I did one of those Jack Benny, and I just looked, and the more I just stood there and looked and looked helpless, the funnier it got. But the kids did it, but I got credit for it. So, but it's things like that. I have one trick where I have a lady come up and do the secret move, and she goes wah 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 over the ropes, and I say no, you didn't watch the hips, watch this, and I go wah wah, and I sway my hips back and forth. And that usually gets a little chuckle. Mm -hmm. Well, one day I picked this lady. She was a beautiful lady. She had a beautiful smile, beautiful personality. I'd already been watching her during the pre-show and knew she'd be good on stage. But she was, let's say, heavy. And I mean, she, she was large. But she was a beautiful lady, beautiful personality. And I got to the part and I said, do the secret move. And she says, wah, 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 wah. I said, no, you got to watch the hips. And I went, wah, wah. And I waved my hips back and forth. And she looked at me and she said, stand back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and she stole the stuff. So, so she was a sweetheart. I wish I could take her to every show. I, I know, you wanted that with every audience. Yeah. <laughs> but it's those comebacks that, that make the show. And the more you do this, the more you, you hear comebacks. Those are ones I'd never heard before or happened before. But you come back with even things to make them funnier and keep them going for a while and get more laughs out of them. So. Now um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of throw you for a little bit because I I, I want to hear about um, uh, the deer. Can you tell me about the deer? Isn't there a story about a deer when you're performing? No. Oh, my, I must have been. Uh, there, uh, it was that's funny. funny. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> so I have to prepare, and I, I didn't. So I, I remembered a story about a deer, but I guess it was. Uh, you know, people will tell tales about me that never happened, <laughs> and they'll say, "Do you remember the time?" I said, "No, I didn't do that. That was somebody else." <laughs> Well, I, um, I'm going to save it to the end. I'm going to get to the next question. Um, I want to know, uh, what do you think that, what is it that makes you funny as a performer? I don't know. You know, that's a hard question. I just, I've always, and it came out of, and most people that are in entertainment, a lot of them, were, were shy as kids. And that was my thing. I, I was very shy, probably shyer than anybody in the world, you know. And, uh, but it was humor that got me out of that shot. And it still have the shyness, but it made me feel comfortable. And it was probably 13, 14 years old when I made an adult laugh with something that I said that it, I wouldn't even, I never heard an adult laugh at me for that reason. Usually when they laughed, they were making fun of me or something. But it, I got confident from that. And, and it was that need. And I think as a child, since I didn't interact with a lot, a lot of kids, I'd go home and watch the old reruns, the black and white sitcoms and things. And, and subconsciously, I think I was going to college school to learn to be, con to learn to be funny. And, I think, and it was a desire, and I don't say that I was funny, but it was a desire to be funny and a passion to be funny that, that you just kept growing. It's like playing a musical instrument. You, you see these kids, if you ever, most every great musician started when he was a child. Mm -hmm. They didn't start when they were 20 or 30. They started when they was a child, when they were developing. And I, I think comedy is the same way. If you start as a, young child, as a young child, it becomes natural. It's just a part of growing. Mm -hmm. So but as what makes me funny, I don't know. I just like to look at things in a different way. 
in, in, in a strange way? In a strange way. <laughs> Runs in the family. Run, my daddy was strange. My granddaddy was strange. So Your whole, your whole family's probably strange. Uh, it's, 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 you can't get out of it. I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. <laughs> probably not the first time. <laughs> first one said that, yeah. yeah. If you only had a dime for every time somebody said that, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be about a dollar a dollar uh, richer right <laughs> no <laughs> be better off than I am today <laughs> well you know I, I was listening to your your response and and it, it it's it, it actually is transitioning into the the last official question um, the official question is what do you think it takes to be funny before you say that I, I want to touch on that I do you think well I'll ask this I'm gonna give a bonus question and it's gonna be an easy one but uh, what what do you think it takes to be funny well, there again, a desire to be funny. And uh, it's, it's something that you, it takes hours and hours, like a, the easiest way is like a musician. It takes hours and hours of practice to be a good musician. But if you don't have that desire, you're not going to spend those hours and hours. You can be a, a, good, magi a good musician, but you can't be an awesome musician unless you've got that desire. To sit. And it's when the practice and the rehearsal becomes fun and enjoyable to you. And so, uh, and I've got, as I've gotten older, I've gone through stage, now I'm doing a lot of writing that I never thought I would do. I've started writing some comedy songs, which I'm not a singer, and I can prove that to you. But it's, Give me a song. No, you know, no, no, it's no. things, <laughs> 10 years ago, I would have told you I would never do, but, and, and I find that I enjoy writing comedy, and, and uh, and thinking about it and, and the process that you go through is hours to come up with one little bitty two line punch thing but i enjoy it so mm -hmm. but uh you just gotta have a desire to be funny now actors great actors i've seen them on movies that are hilarious then you go see them in real life or on tv where they interview and they're not funny they're not naturally funny, but they're awesome actors, and they can be funny in the movies and things. You know, it's interesting you say that. Lucille Ball in interviews has said that she is not funny, but she can do funny things if they're written for her. That's what she said. She and and we all. It's it, a whole different skill set. I can't do it that way. If it's written down and you say take this and be funny, I'm gonna struggle with that. But if you say, take this subject and make it funny in your own mind, then I can do that better. Mm -hmm. But just hand me a script and say, it's a, it's a struggle, it's a challenge. And there's all kinds, it's like, like music, there's different types of music, there's different types of comedy. But most people think com there's only one type of comedy, but there's not. There's all kinds of comedy. And what's funny to this person may not be funny to this other person in the audience. And what I try to do is find something that's funny to all of them, but you can't get all of them. Just get as many as you can get. And uh, it's even harder with the politically correct stuff, but but it's there, and it makes it more of a challenge. But it's I, I love it. It's, I'd rather do that and eat, and you can tell how I like to eat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you know, um, I did promise you that I, I wouldn't give you any curveballs, and I'm not. I'm not because this is, um, it's it's almost a, a follow up to uh, a, a something you said that was very interesting to me. I want to ask you um, because you said that that you think that um, maybe I, I'm going to step back because not what you said that that it's it's good to start uh, to be funny as a child. My question is, do you think you can be funny l starting later in life? Yes. Yes, uh, I think there again it goes to, and you you change. It's, it's amazing. It's inter you know, I used to do a lot of birthday parties, and you could see like six months apart in a child is a totally different child sometimes as they mature. And as you grow as an adult, you're still changing, but you're not changing as rapidly until you get about 55 and then you start changing back real quick. <laughs> rapidly, rapidly the other way, yeah. Way, you know, and it's this exact same sequence in reverse. You know, it's go back down to the diapers. But, uh, I don't forgot what the question was. Do you think that you can be um, become funny later in life? Yeah, I think I've seen some people that didn't think they were funny, but then when they got a taste of it, it's like a shark with blood. <laughs> when they get a taste of it, man, they run. And the best comedians out there, and I don't know, and so this is, doesn't let me in. The best one, if you, they're 
that are very intelligent, very intel and they would be successful at whatever they had a desire to do, not just comedy, but that's the best ones. That's the, the Steve Harveys and all that. They are a step above as far as intelligence, but they chose comedy. And they would be good at anything they wanted to do. I think you're right. I, I, I really believe that, too. Uh, and based on the, the people that you talked about, Steve Harvey, uh, Robin Williams, Steve Martin, I think, that we, you know, Steve, uh, St uh, Robin Williams was supposed to be a genius, you know, and, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if the Steves were as well. But, yes, I agree. And like Steve Martin, he's what he's he's written movies. He's he's an actor. He's done everything he's done. He's done extremely well. Even when he didn't do it extremely well, it was better than most people could do. And people paid a bought a ticket to go see it. And 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 he's the one that says uh, flat out. He goes, I have no talent. He I, I don't buy that. No, he plays musical instruments. He plays them well. I mean, just to remember those songs or something amazing. But uh, th those people. Are just gifted, and they're our they're our blessings is their talents, you know. Yes. So. Well, I did um, say early on that I wanted to save something for the end. I want to tell an anecdotal story uh, about Glenn that, um, well, no, when we uh, when I first met you, it was the first time going to um, our, uh, our favorite conference, uh, Cadabra, and I'll, I'll give information about that, but you gave a lecture about memorable mailings I think it might have been the term um, does that sound about right that's right it's ways to stay in your clients or your friends in their memory bank you need to you need to do something out of the normal that they won't forget you about and it's it's, it's helped me book a lot of return engagements from people and it's, it's just an unusual way to do it with uh, with I didn't know if you want to go in oh yeah I will actually I, I appreciate that um, because um, it actually is one of the first memories I have of Cadabra that is locked in my brain. And, and between you, it's, it's you uh, and Joe Leffler. Those are the two that, that were the first memories that I have that are locked in, in my brain. And uh, the one I want to give uh, the anecdotal story was I was uh, talking with Jim Kleefeld and he said uh, that, that uh, a few years back, uh, his wife uh, collected the mail, was going through the, the, uh, the, the mail and she paused and then started laughing, hysterically laughing. And Jim said, he goes, I have no idea what she, what was causing her to, to laugh. He says, I looked over, I saw a Christmas card. And he goes, what, what, could, what Christmas card could make her laugh so much? And he walked over and looked down and saw that it was from Glenn Strange. And, and Glenn has this, this really neat, and can I give it, tell him about it? Yeah. Okay. I, should I, it. I hope I'm going to tell you. It should be pretty simple. Basically, he takes a, a Christmas card that, that he received uh, over, over the years. He would cross out the, uh, the information from the other people and then write his own in their place. And it, to me, is one of the funniest things ever. And I wanted to share that with you. Well, thank you. Yeah. And and the, and just sending the card if you cross out, it's like it's especially good if it's from Aunt Aunt John, oh. Aunt Nail and Uncle Johnson, because it's more personal. You just X their name out and then sign your name, Merry Christmas, sign your name. But put a note in there, something. And this this is what this makes it even funnier. You can and I have sent them what just that. Once they know what it is, the next year they'll just they won't get an explanation. But the first year they need to get an explanation. You say it's been a tough year. I didn't make as much as I. I was hoping to. I hope you don't mind this used Christmas card. Next year it'll be a brand new one or something. So that adds a little reason for them you getting it. Because some people they don't get the humor and they say, "Well, why did he send this?" You know. And and when you put it in the card, you try to get the biggest card and fold it up really bulky and wrink, fold it the wrong directions. <laughs> And uh, one year I ran out of cards, and I had to go buy new cards and wrinkle them up, set glasses on them, put rings on them, and sign them from Aunt Nail and Uncle Johnson. So everybody got a card from Aunt Nail and Uncle Johnson that year. They didn't realize that they weren't real cards that I got because I had run out of them. Well, now they know. <laughs> so I enjoyed that, whether they did or not. So... Well, you know what, Glenn? I, I really thank you very much for, for being here and... and um, I, I'm, I'm glad we are on this journey together. And, and again, uh, this is where I'm going to embarrass you a little bit. Uh, it, it's a consensus around the, the cadaver community that you are probably the funniest man in the room. And, 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 and you are so humble and you don't, you don't think so. But 
I, I believe that you are are uh, and, and Barry's going to slap me on the head, but but I I think I think you're probably one of the, the probably the funniest guy in the room. So uh, that's awesome that people think that, <laughs> but don't don't talk to anybody else. I won't tell anyone the secret though, except here. So thank you, Glenn. Glenn, uh, I appreciate it. And uh, and this is the DIY magician. Again, we're on the journey to find out how to be funny. Until next time. If you enjoyed that video, join the Learn to Entertain YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the DIY Magician, join the DIY Magician Facebook group or artist page. And if you are a professional entertainer, you may want to join the DIY Magic Facebook group. Thank you again and enjoy.